<laughs> the chorus of children in the audience. <laughs> well, you're going to hear it a couple times tonight, so I apologize. Uh, the extremity of what we're dealing with means that I need to go a few times. So, uh, as I was saying, hello! Oh! Third of the audience knows how that works. So we're just doing a little, little, a few little hellos. So there's a lot of different ways to say hello. There's the hello of a, an acquaintance that you can't quite remember their name, and as you're shaking your hand, you're frantically trying to remember what it is, but you can't quite get there. So it's like hello, <laughs> hello. <laughs> oh, very good, very good. There's the, the hi, like a casual, casual hi at work. Just oh hi, hi, just a, hi. <laughs> uh, uh, there's also sup, which is high, but in California. Sup, 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 sup. Lay down. And a nice, just a nice friendly hi to the guy on stage who's going to give you a show for the next hour and a bit, or whatever it ends up being. Hi! Uh, who knows? Who knows? Um, so I have an invisible disability. You can't see it. I look it around everywhere. It's called complex regional pain syndrome. My nervous system is shattered, and we're going to find out why in a hot minute. But one of the side effects is that I sweat a lot. So as an audience, because you get to look at me, um, I'm going to give you the choice of how I wear my uh, heavy sweatband. So we've got two options, right? We can go classic biker. Yeah. I'm an outlaw. Um, or other option is, uh, go that way. <laughs> Hold on, we'll get there, we'll get there. Kind of like an off-brand white Tupac. <laughs> one or two, make some noise for one. <laughs> make some noise for two. <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> I'm just gonna, does this look, do I look okay? Yeah. Just, Show. I don't care about your stupid head. Oh my gosh. Uh, hello. Hey, what's your name? Murray. Hey, Murray. Thanks for coming out. You are killing that beard, my guy. <laughs> so you gotta wear the beard. You can't let a beard wear you. You gotta wear the beard. You know, because you own it. My friend. <laughs> Although I might, we might look into a loan share at some point. Okay, so, right, the first bit of the show, I'm just warning you now, is a little bit rough, right? We're going to go through all the surgeries that led to this. Do you guys want to see a funny tattoo? Yeah. yeah. That's my zipper. I tell my kid that's where babies come from. He's real messed up about it. It's not with sex. No babies. No, I mean, you're not good. You're going back in. <laughs> um, so when I was 13 years old, I was a boy becoming a man, and my tummy started to hurt, and so I ignored it, because I was a boy becoming a man, and that's what men do, until I went to the toilet, and went, and out came blood, and I said, I said, Mom, come look, not in the, like, come look at this amazing giant poop that I did, which every one of you has done. I know. Every one of you has had a, I'm proud of that moment. I need to share. Um, and then my mom came in and saw the murder scene in the toilet, and she went, ah, oh, shit! And I was like, no, blood! And we went to the doctor, and he said, I have a disease called ulcerative colitis, which is where your immune system attacks your large intestine. Nobody knows why. The immune system is just kind of a jerk sometimes. It can very quickly kill your large intestine, leading to the amazingly named toxic megacolon, who... I bet our killer in concert. I bet they have a rager of a mosh pit. Would you go see Toxic Megacolon? Yes. yes! So, as we go through this story, there are some different responses you might have. You might go, ugh. So just try and, ugh. Ugh. Ah! Ah! Or, <laughs> <laughs> right. When we see things like this, we have three options. We can laugh, we can cry, or we can die. Coincidentally, the name of my podcast found wherever you find your favorite podcast. <laughs> My co-host might be in the audience. <laughs> um, uh, I like to laugh, because it's fun. Crying, you have to do sometimes, but it doesn't really make for a great stage show. And dying is inevitable, but again, not a great theatrical experience. There's not a huge market for snuff these days. 
So these, I'm inviting you guys to laugh along with me, okay? These are real tragedies that really almost killed me. But, like I say, laugh, cry, and die. So, I had ulcerative colitis. I didn't get toxic megacolon. I did, though, get very sick. And they explained that my intestines were not quite doing what they're supposed to. Ugh. So, uh, right, have a look at my guts. Have a look at my guts. Have a look at my guts. Right, examine those ropes. Make sure they're regular ropes, no wires, no switches, no magnets, just three bits of rope like you'd buy in any magic shop or if I'm under your parents' bed. I can I have my guts back? Ah! That one. Okay, and then the big one? The little one. Oh, jeez. Okay, so like I was saying, you've got your in, your, in your tummy area, you've got your large intestine, small intestine, and your rectum, or butthole, as it's called. <laughs> Now, uh, any good gastroenterologist would tell you that all of these three are actually equally important. So they should really be the same. And you've got your large intestine, your small intestine, and your rectum, and they're all the same, right? So I got really, really sick, and then my large intestine started to, started to die. It didn't go full toxic megacolon, but it wasn't very happy. And the doctor said, if we take out your large intestine, your immune system won't have anything to attack anymore, and you'll be great. So they took out my large intestine, and then connected my small intestine in my butt so I could still oh. So what they did is they took my small intestine, and they poked it out of the side of my tummy, so I pooped sideways for a while. Um, you save a fortune on toilet paper. And let me tell you something, right? There's a thing called peristalsis. It's where your intestines are going wonga, wonga, wonga to shubble everything along, right? And that still happens as it's there. So it, like one in the morning when you're changing your output bag and the intestines is going wonga, 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 and you're just kind of hit, staring with this hypnotic eye of Sauron. And then a little piece of corn goes boop. <laughs> That's an image that will stay with me and now you forever. Uh, so they took my, uh, my stoma out after six, after six weeks, and they let it heal, and they connected it back up, and they made a pouch out of the end of my small intestines, and then connected it all together, so I had two bits of my guts again. <laughs> uh, problem happened, though. So I was great for a while, but then what happened was that my large intestine, it got all twisted around the scar tissue that was in there, and then a piece of it burst. Oh. I know. <laughs> ah, yay! <laughs> Is the vibe I'm getting tonight. Um, yeah, not a good time. And then you've only got one piece that goes around. But what they can do is they can go in and they can cut the end. Uh, they, they just cut the middle out of my small intestine and then stitch it all back together. Like that. Um, <laughs> The intestines burst, they heal me up, everything is fine again. One, two, three, uh huh, three, three, three. and that is the saga of my guts. Um, and you'd think, right, at the age of uh, 23, I've been through all of that, and I thought, I've, I've overcome my challenges. You know, you think that's like enough for a chunk of life, right? Get started, I'm gonna go off into my life, and I live my life until I had a fall of a skateboard, and I broke my L5 vertebrae, which pressed onto my spinal cord, which hurt. So, they had to get some screws, and put the screws in either side, and then do an L5 S1 fusion. And I celebrated my recovery from this by getting up, and I, so L5 S1 fusion, and then I was living in Edinburgh at the time, and someone stole the front brake off my bicycle. And I went to the bike co-op. My wife specifically put an invisible helmet on my head and said, be safe. <laughs> and I got a new brake, which was much better than my old brake, which I was excited about, until I was going downhill, taxi pulls out, I slam on the brakes, go flying over the handlebars, thinking, don't hurt your back, don't hurt your back. So I land on my hands and knees, Aww. and I broke my humerus, Aww. which wasn't very funny. Uh, I was
was in the hospital, and I was a bit bored of surgery by this time, and I said, well, what if I don't get the screws in my arm? And he says, then you will never be able to use your elbow again, which makes this motion. So I figured, okay, we'll go ahead and do that. <laughs> I celebrated my recovery with a Donner Kebab pizza, the second unhealthiest food in the world. They need to eat these things in Scotland to keep the cold away. But I'm not Scottish, so I can't handle the saturated fat. So the flood of saturated fat dislodged the gallstone, lodging the gallstone in the neck of my bladder, cutting off the blood supply to my gallbladder, killing my gallbladder, and giving me gangrene. And the doctor said, we're going to have to eat that out, my guy. And I said, great, anything that stops me smelling like almonds. Fantastic. Uh, it was about this time, though, afterwards, when my guts had healed, I noticed that my legs were starting to hurt again. So even though I hurt my back, it was my legs that gave me pain, because it was the nerves that travel through your back, right? through that area that was damaged. And uh, I go to the doctor and they do some scans and they find out that the screws from my first back surgery were loose. I literally had screws loose. <laughs> my dad thought this was the funniest thing that has ever happened to anyone in the history of time. He would take me to the hardware store, get me to stand next to bins of screws and be like, <laughs> <laughs> We don't talk. We, we don't talk much anymore. Um, so they had to replace those screws with bigger screws and more bolts, so I could still stand upright. And after this one, I was feeling great. I was strong. I recovered, and I had gone to the Dunedin Fringe Festival, where I just was. And I used to open my act with juggling a bowling ball and two bowling pins. And I was juggling a bowling ball, and I caught the bowling ball, and as I caught it, the weight popped two discs in my neck, leaving me to say, in front of a hundred people, leaving me to say, and this is a quote, ow, geez, the shit fuck out! <laughs> I dropped the bowling ball, and uh, it limped on with the show. Uh, it was wild, like how much it had popped. I went to my physiotherapist and she was like, oh, necks normally heal pretty easily. And then I showed her my CT cam and she went, oh God, no, you need, you need surgery, please. Put it away. Um, this pressure on my spinal cord was so intense, it literally felt like there was a zip tie around the first joint of my finger. It was nuts. And ACC only paid for one level of my neck fusion, because they suck. <laughs> so after this, after this neck accident, this is the one that really broke the span of my nervous, this was little. this broke my nervous system, right? Getting my spinal cord pressed on that hard totally flipped my switch. My pain system became overwhelmed. My fire alarm was constantly going off. My mind labeled everything pain. I couldn't function. I couldn't go to the supermarket. I couldn't work. I was a mess, which is a great time to stop. And congratulate all of you for getting through the tough part of the show. <laughs> yes. um, so I think you guys deserve a treat for, for getting through that. You guys did really well. Unfortunately, though, treats are expensive. Um, does anyone in the audience have any paper money? The bigger the bill, the better the trick. <laughs> Seriously, I need paper money or the show cannot continue. Oh. Oh, yeah, and, and bring it up. If you've got money, bring it to the front. First person here wins, although that kid's a kid, so he gets to come up. Come on up, kid. Oh, oh. If there's, if there's no money... <laughs> was that just hope? Was that like, I have a... Well, I have a <laughs> A pocket full of receipts, does that work? Oh, he's got money. No, let's get all right. Come on up, come up the stairs. Right. Excellent. Are you enjoying the swear words? Cool. All right, what's your name, my friend? All right, Jasper. Smile, face the front, and pretend you're having fun. Stand here. There. Great. Okay, Jasper, you have two jobs. The first one is to write your name on this bill. Did you bring a pen? Oh, that's fine. I always keep a spare pen in my nose. <coughs> uh, <laughs> OK, Jasper. You can write your name. There for you. A fiver. I said the bigger the bill, the better the trick. This is going to be rubbish. Um, 
You just didn't want to invest in everyone else's entertainment. Not my taxes. <laughs> some stupid magic trick. Sorry. All right, Jasper. I'm going to take this pen. I'm going to put it away. <laughs> okay, your other job is to be like my cheerleader. Okay, so when I say do the, do the thing, you're going to go. And then all these guys are going to go. Okay, we'll do a practice. Okay, do the thing. Now, if you're the kind of monster that doesn't applaud and cheer for a child, just think that's the kind of thing that can lead to years of expensive therapy, and it could be your fault. <laughs> right, Jasper. Behold, as I present to you the ancient, subtle, oriental art of origami. I learned origami from my uncle who lived in the Philippines. He's a manila folder. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Get ready to do the thing. Behold, as I present to you the pinnacle of my Filipino uncle's origami abilities, a rectangle! Do the thing! <laughs> Alright, my guy. That's not supposed to be in there. Okay, you hold on to that. Okay, give me that. Okay, stick out your tongue. Alright. I have three envelopes here. This is to confuse you. I'm going to ask you a series of increasingly difficult questions and give you a chance to win back some of your money. <laughs> Question one, what is your name? <laughs> Correct, big hand for Jasper, wow, well done. <laughs> These do get a little bit harder. What is the capital of New Zealand? Incorrect, N is the capital of New Zealand. Oh. <laughs> right. And question number three, as I warn, these do increase in difficulty. What is the square root of 3,790 over 5 I or P2, H squared? <laughs> Incorrect, I would have explained. <laughs> I would have accepted, I don't know. <laughs> One out of three is not bad. Look in your envelope and see what you've won. Nothing? Really? <laughs> Tell you what, go get another five dollars. <laughs> And it ricocheted off the floor, rolled across the ceiling, bounced off that lady's head, and ended up in that man's right hand front pocket. Reach into your pocket, sir. But it did not stop there. It continued <laughs> on its epic journey. Get ready to do the thing. All the way over here to the purple bag of mystery and wonderment. <laughs> All right, there's two things in here. What do you think the first one is? A pencil. Good guess, but incorrect. It is actually a knife. <laughs> Go ahead, take that knife, show it off to everyone, prove it's a regular knife, no switches, no billets, just a regular dirty knife that I stole from the canteen, previous to the show. <laughs> uh, there's another thing in here. What do you think it might be? Another knife. Good guess, but also wrong. It is actually the mystery orange, which today is a lemon. <laughs> I don't know, shall we find out? Watch as I cut around the circumference, which is a fancy word for perimeter. Turn two to the right, three to the left, open up that for me, and you'll see something that you'll remember for a very long time, just in there, your, your five dollar note, <laughs> inside a lemon, sealed by God himself. Oh. <laughs> I uh, didn't learn magic the way uh, most people come to it as an impressed eight-year-old who studies nothing else to the detriment of their social skills. Uh, I actually uh, learned magic while I was in hospital from the start of the show. I spent a lot of time 
dressed like this in snazzy clothes. Huh? Yeah. There's not enough swish in most men's clothing, I've decided. That's why when I'm in hospital, you very quickly abandon the butt flapping gown. Nobody wants to see your pimply ass going to the shower. And you get into, you know, pajamas because you're going to be relaxing for a while. You can't do anything. If you want to look real fancy, uh, you can bring your toothbrush and just have that like hanging out of your side pocket. That's like, I've been someplace. <laughs> and my teeth are clean. Gladys, 88, dying of liver failure. <laughs> um, I also would always carry a pencil around with me because I loved going underneath doctor's desks and writing my name because I have a peculiar delight in petty vandalism. <laughs> um, so, so much time in the hospital is where somebody brought me a deck of cards and a book, and I learned how to do magic. So, does anybody, can I have the house lights up, please? Does anybody really want to, like, be in a magic trick? Because some people are super into it. This person here, with the, yeah, you. Point, no, uh, the, the one behind you. Sorry. They were, they were just super keen and quick. Okay. <clears throat> Stand here, smile, face the front, fun, yes? Excellent. What's your name, young man? Leo. All right, big hand for Leo, ladies and gentlemen. So, do you guys want to see the first thing I learned uh, from, the, from my card book? That's the sexy shuffle. There's a certain type of woman who's like, ooh. All right. Pick out any card, I can know which one, it's not that kind of a trick. Ah, the Joker. So this trick uh, is the trick that fooled Houdini. It was on page 87 of Hoffman's <laughs> new own Professor Boy's own super fun time magic activity book. And it's a banger. So, you got that Joker? Right? Do you know what that tells me about your aura, your soul, that you chose the black and white Joker underneath the moon of Nelson tonight? Nothing. You shouldn't read too much into these things. This is the card trick. <laughs> okay. Write your first name on the front of the card for me. Okay. As I go through, I want you to say stop. Stop. Take that card, put it face down. There we go. Now, you guys might not be able to see this, but I have on top of my head an invisible magic hat. And because I have a magic hat, I can do magic tricks like this. I can take the card that you signed, Stuck in the middle. Snap, tap, and your card jumps to the top just like that. <laughs> but I know what you're thinking, Leo. I could have found out your name before when I was eavesdropping when I was trying to pick your mom's purse to steal the other things that were in your wallet, right? So, <laughs> to make sure it's definitely your card, I want you to write your last name on there as well, okay? All right. And the last four digits of your parents' credit card number? <laughs> And then the three on the back. That's the okay. So we're going to take your doubly signed card. You hold on to that still for a minute. Now I want you to do the magic. Give it a tap. You can see it doesn't work. Do you know why? You don't have an invisible magic hat. But you can borrow mine. So we'll take this one, put it on the top. Give you the hat. Now give it a tap. You can see with the aid of the hat, it jumps to the top just like that. Yeah? Happy? Really? Are you happy in yourself, Leo? <laughs> Right, go ahead, push that in, give it a tap. <laughs> Jumps to the top just like that. The magic hat is truly all powerful. But Leo, I know what you're thinking. I could have found out your last name as well when I was scanning your card using the Facebook passwords that I stole from your parents using a printer that was hidden in my watch connected to an app on my smartphone. That means that I couldn't see anything, which is why I put the thing there that you already had for your first place, right? Exactly. So, <laughs> to make sure it's definitely your card, I want you to draw all over that card. Draw whatever's in your secret heart, the very essence of your being rendered, or just scribbled, really, it's up to you. Cool. Good drawing. All right. That's misdirection. Okay. So we got that one. Put this one in here. Right. Watch. 100% fair. Right in the middle of the deck. Give me that one. Now hold out your hand. Put your other hand on top. All right. Now, 
I'm going to snap my fingers, his card's going to leap out of the deck, circle around the room, and land on your face. You're going to lose your mind. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened to you. Everything past this is down. This is the peak moment of your life. Are you ready to have your mind blown into a thousand tiny pieces? Correct answer. Okay. I'm going to snap. Hold on, where's the strength? Um, hold, just keep your hands together. Let me check. That's not even your card. Um, no, it is. You still have my magic hat. Bit of a misstep. Tell you what, though. What if I did one better? What if I had all the cards in his hands vanish except for your sign card? Would you be pretty impressed? Would you guys give me a huge round of applause? You feel that? That was all your cards vanishing. Open up your hands. And you can see that all of the cards have vanished in his hands except for his sign card. Just like that. Keep that thing, keep it <laughs> Cost me thirteen dollars every time I do that trick. I have no idea where the cards go. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. Sorry, I was cutting off the blood supply to my brain, which normally isn't a problem. Okay. So as I was saying. A lot of time in hospital, right? Had a lot of medication. My favorite medication story is I go into the hospital, I'm having excruciating stomach pain, and the doctor says to me, Mr. Wilson, Wilbury, you're in a lot of pain right now. So I'm gonna give you some heroin. He said, we call it diamorphine, but really, yeah, it's heroin. And he gave me heroin, and then I saw what all the fuss was about. <laughs> that stuff is Moorish. It's, and after you have surgery, they give you a button. And you can have as much heroin as you want for a day. You can have heroin for a day, which I think is fair. You've had your guts sliced open, you've been flayed alive. You can have heroin for a day. More than a day, not so good. But for that one day, oh boy. It's like your insides are filled with hugs. I, um... And it wasn't until I had, you know, some, a really extreme medication like that, and it changes how your brain works and what your perception does, and it was when they first gave me heroin that I started seeing these things. I don't know where they come from. You guys familiar with the movie The Labyrinth? Yeah. David Bowie steals a baby, he becomes a cultural icon. I steal a baby, I'm no longer allowed to work in the maternity ward. I don't think that's fair. You guys want to see the full David Bowie? Yeah. Uh, so I take pharmaceuticals. I also use plant medicine, medical cannabis. I say medical cannabis. I really prescribed it to myself. I was like, weed for you. And then I gave it to my dealer because I don't need this. Um, the medical cannabis is even more confusing. It does mess with your perceptions and your brain. I can't remember anything anymore. But what the medical cannabis does do is it takes my screaming nervous system, which is going, ah, Jesus, ah, why are there no intestines? Why are there so many screws? What did you do with the gallbladder? Ah! Is what my nervous system is saying. And then I have the medical cannabis, and it goes, wait, what? 